Last time in class. Sorry I'm late. We had to take my sister to the doctor. She has sickle cell disease. What causes this disease anyway? Her DNA ordered her cells to make that beta hemoglobin. Everything that is physical about us comes from our DNA. And every gene is expressed or shown by a protein. What protein did that gene make? Well, the protein that was just translated, that's beta hemoglobin. The protein that causes blood cells to be sickle, like in sickle cell anemia. Whoa, well, I wanna see the sequence for uh, alpha hemoglobin. That's the normal shape one, right? Yeah. Sure, here it is. Um, I don't, I don't see a difference at all. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Man. This is different. One letter ain't about to do I, nothing. No, nothing. 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 Do you see the difference? <laughs> Stay tuned to figure it out. No, oh, wait, like one of the bases is different. One letter ain't about to do nothing. No, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. A whole I mean, disease. Is that? Wow, like, I wouldn't expect a gene that causes sickle cell to look like that. It looks about the same as the regular one. <laughs> I mean, what do you want it to look like? I just felt like it would look, you know, extremely different if it's going to cause something like that. Okay, well, look at this. Oh, oh my goodness. What? Is that different enough? What? I mean, that's crazy different. What do you think this gene would cause? Death? It looks much more serious than sickle cell. Well, guess what? The amino acid chain ends up being exactly the same as the normal hemoglobin gene. Yep, this is just mutation. All change isn't bad. A mutation is just a change in genetic material. Oh, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, and Spider-Man. Um, well, yeah, but not just those extreme and made-up situations. You know, since all physical traits that we have start from information in our cells, well, that means even things like being lactose intolerant, Makai, having sickled blood cells, even having blue eyes, these are all due to mutations. And genetic mutations are the sole source of all biodiversity. Okay, so like... What do we do to avoid getting these mutations? Because I don't want right. any. I know. I, yes. Well, I heard mm, that 5G is no, causing I saw a all sorts of problems. No, I saw a documentary. No, I think like, about it. No, you have to go. It's in the government. No, it's in the government. You don't go. It's no, it's really the government. The food that has all these things. Hey, 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 listen, okay. While there's research debating this as we speak, the vast majority of mutations are random or spontaneous, meaning there's not much that you could do to ensure that they will occur or prevent that they will occur. However, there are some things that can induce or increase chances of serious mutations. Environmental factors that you're exposed to like radiation, um, specific chemicals, and certain bio agents like viruses and bacteria can bring about mutations. These are called mutagens. Ugh but I don't want to have any mutations. Well, that's too bad. You, you got plenty of them. Uh... You are the rudest <laughs> teacher I've ever had. No, I'm so serious. Okay, <laughs> there are two main types of mutations. Genetic, where the basis of DNA change, and chromosomal, where pieces of whole chromosomes change. There are so many genetic mutations that occur in your body. Bases can be substituted, inserted, deleted, but the vast majority of them are repaired by special enzymes before we even reach translation. But if it's not repaired, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It depends on what happens to the protein. Let's keep looking at the alpha hemoglobin gene. And here's a mutated version that I showed you earlier. We have a lot of substitution going on here. The bases have changed dramatically in DNA which means the bases and codons in RNA have also changed dramatically. But has the final protein chain of amino acids changed? Oh, it's, it's the same. Exactly. So the gene was mutated, but it produced the same protein chain. This is called a silent mutation, where a mutation occurs, but the final protein is not affected. So even though this gene was mutated, alpha hemoglobin would still be made. Now let's look at your sister's gene. What was the difference between these two genes? Oh, 
that uh that thymine was substituted with an adenine. Yeah, but if based on what you just said, I mean, if the other gene changed so much and it still was fine, well, this should be okay too, right? Well, well, I guess not though. Well, let's figure out the amino acid chain. You can pause if you need a second. Use the codon chart. Okay, so that would be uh, ACU, that's THR, threonine, then CCU, proline, just like the other one. Oh, it is GUG. So that's with VAL, valine. Valine instead of glutamic acid. Oh, so that one base did change the protein. Yep. This substitution, we can call this a missense mutation. Since the final amino acid chain was affected and changed, in just one spot, but that one amino acid can cause those rods to form in red blood cells. All of that because of one substitution? Absolutely. Sometimes that one substitution can cause the entire translation protein synthesis process to stop. That's called a nonsense mutation. Insertions and deletions can have a greater effect. They cause the entire reading frame to shift. These are typically very serious outcomes and they rarely end up silent. These are called frame shift mutations. So I have my DNA and chromosomes just mutating and changing in my body just like that whenever they want to. Uh, I haven't said anything about your chromosomes yet. Chromosomal mutations are about 100 times less common than genetic mutations, and they have profound effects. More profound than frame shift mutations? Why? <laughs> I mean, you tell me. Why would chromosomal mutations have a greater effect on organisms than just genetic mutations involving changes in DNA bases? Oh, like because instead of like single bases being changed, you got an entire piece of chromosome being changed. And like if chromosomes hold like thousands of genes, that means hundreds or like thousands of genes could be changed at like one time. Exactly. Sometimes not just a piece of a chromosome could be missing or changed, but an entire chromosome could be missing or added to a cell that's not supposed to be there. Oh, uh oh. These mutations occur in sex cells, your gametes. During crossing over, portions of chromosomes can be deleted, flipped, inverted, switched, translocation, or portions can be added to another section, meaning it has a duplicate portion of those same genes on the chromosome. How could a cell lose or gain an entire chromosome during crossing over? Well, do you remember how the copied chromosomes end up in the new daughter cells? And they get separated. Exactly, and that's not always perfect. So the final type of chromosomal mutation we'll talk about it's called non-disjunction. Here's a diploid cell that's about to experience meiosis. Based on what you remember, if this is a diploid cell, how many chromosomes should each gamete have at the end? Well, if this cell is starting with two, the gamete should have half, so. Okay, so the gamete should have one, one chromosome each. Right, it should have one chromosome each. Now, when these chromosomes don't get separated, that's gonna result in a gamete having more chromosomes than it should, or less chromosomes than it should. And when it combines with another gamete, this is gonna cause that organism, and let's assume it's a human this time, it could have an extra chromosome or it could be missing a chromosome due to this non-disjunction. Oh, so you don't just die when that happens? You got extra chromosomes like that? Some can be fatal, but there are many people living just fine with several syndromes caused by these mutations. Like Down syndrome is caused by trisomy, having three copies of the 21st chromosome. Okay, well, I understand mutations are common in some of the side effects, but like, why can't we just have a pill or something to control our genes? Like, I don't wanna be out here living in fear. Well, again, you shouldn't be living in fear of mutations at all, they're normal. And even those with syndromes caused by them may be different in some way, but that's no reason to pity, to doubt their abilities or treat them differently. 
besides, there are many breakthroughs that allow, I guess, what you just wished for to control our genes. Genetic engineering. Scientists alter the genome of organisms to make advancements in medicine and technology. They can take the gene that helps us produce insulin and DNA from bacteria, recombine them, and it would help someone with diabetes that has issues to produce insulin. And don't they use that to change or copy like favorable genes in plants and animals to make chickens larger and vegetables last longer? Like genetically modified food? That's not good. Yeah, but they've developed special enzymes and RNAs that can actually edit mutated genes, like the gene that causes sickle cell. Okay, but who do they test that on? Probably animals, but... That's not good. Dang. Okay, there are many pros and cons that I don't have time to discuss, so look that up on your own. Matter of fact, go home and look that up. We're going to have a debate. All right, welcome back. Do you all have that info for the debate, your research? Debate? You didn't say all of that, but I did take a screenshot of a Wikipedia page. So. Hey, bro, can you uh, airdrop that to me, please? Oh, airdrop Mr. Mickens. You see it? It's a, uh, it's a Makai's iPhone. I was worried about, you know, like my future children having sickle cell, but guess what? My mom told me not to worry because she had some blood work done. And she doesn't even have the sickle cell trait. Oh. Isn't that good news? <laughs> but your sister... Stop staring at me. Weird.